My guest is Michelle Hewitt, Chair of Disability Without Poverty. Good afternoon. Hi, Michelle. Good afternoon. Good to talk to you again. Good to have you back. Um, in this election, what do you see as the biggest issues faced by people with disabilities? Poverty. Um, obviously, it's, uh, it's something that we find that the disability rate for disability assistance in BC is below what we call the deep poverty line at um, just over $1,400 a month. So um, one of my main concerns is, you know, you said that 20% um, of people aged 15 to 64 are disabled. 27% of people in Canada are disabled. And obviously, you know, once we get over the age of 65, we tend to accrue some more disabilities. So a lot of our seniors are disabled, which accounts for that rise in possibility. When you were talking you know, in your previous half hour about what we want to hear in the debate tonight, I want to hear the leaders talk about the province's disabled people. I looked at each of the platforms, you know, on the BC Conservatives, are kind of putting their platform out in a non-traditional way. It's, it's a bit piecemeal. You know, you mentioned to a previous uh, caller that, um, that, that the piece that had come out today on mm -hmm. addiction issues and so on. So there isn't like a PDF one document. Right, the platform search, so. is yet to be released, right? Yeah, it's kind of, but you can find lots of different pieces. I've searched every piece and I found the mention of disability or, you know, words related to disability once. Search the NDP platform, it's there six times. Search the Green platform, it's there 42 times, a whole section on accessibility and disability. So I want the leaders to see disabled people as a strong part of BC life, of people that shouldn't be seen in isolation. And I, I, I want to hear them talking about our issues. Um, you know, when we talk about housing, the housing stock that's accessible in BC is, is really low. Um, you know, so whenever every issue has a disability lens to it. And I appreciate your having gone through those plat platforms or the promises that have been made. And when it comes to the Conservatives, I think part of what they talked about was expanding or improving handy dart service. Um, they talked about uh, increasing um, the benefits for uh, uh, re for renovating your accommodations, uh, for right. example, things like so that. They, they, they talked about the handy dart service for seniors, right? Mm. It, like, come on, disabled people, you know, those 20% of the population aged 15 to 64, we're not seniors. We are young, vibrant, you know, a full part of society that want to work and volunteer and socialize. Like, let's not have it just in the seniors part of, 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 of the platform. Let's see us as people that need to be out there in life. So, and uh, sorry to cut you off. And yes, they did talk about... Um, the the home um, the uh, renovation increasing the renovation credit but that only works if you own a home or are able to renovate a home hmm. many people living in poverty that's just not the case uh, yes going through the the wording um, in their announcement is double the home renovation tax credit for seniors and persons with disabilities to help them stay in the homes they love and the transportation handy dart was uh, for uh, what the headline is transportation for seniors. What seniors. is what is it about, uh, let's talk about the NDP platform now as well. What is it that, that stands out for you, if any, if anything? So a really important announcement that the NDP made not long before the writ was dropped, that we have this federal benefit that's going to start being paid out next year that we've talked about on here before mm -hmm. called the, the Canada. Canada Disability Benefit. Yes. And a really important part is that the province does not claw any of it back. Um, and the NDP government made that promise and the Greens have made that promise as well. And there isn't anything yet from the Conservatives, but I would hope to hear from that, that from them as well. 
It's really important. As I said, the amount that disabled people who receive disability assistance get is below what we call the deep poverty line. The poverty line in, uh, in, in BC is roughly $2,300. And as I said, they get over just between $1,400 and $1,500. Massive, massive gap. And this new benefit is only $200. So don't take any of it away. So that to me is really important that they've put that you know, continued commitment right there in their, in their um, um, platform. The other thing that I see is adjusting the spousal rule to help lift more people out of poverty. So within the disability community, we call this the right to love. So often if you are, um, you know, you're disabled and you want to live with your partner, um, putting your two incomes together can create such a, a, a rise in levels that it means that you lose your own uh, benefits and you often lose the services that go along with them. And it means then that you don't have any independent funds of your own. So if unfortunately you're in an abusive relationship, getting out is, is very difficult because you, 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 have no, you have no finance of your own. But we all deserve the dignity and autonomy that comes with having our own money. And so I'm, I'm very happy to see that part that um, the spousal rule and if the NDP do form the next government, we will definitely be following up with that, that with them hard and fast, because that is something we've been we've had as a priority for a long time. My guest is Michelle Hewitt, Chair of Disability Without Poverty, and we are asking you, what are the disability issues that need to be highlighted in this provincial election?